Coming up on this week's Fever Film Room, coming off a comeback win against the champion Los Angeles Sparks, Natalie Achanwa and Erlena Larkins join the show to explain how Indiana managed yet another comeback. And four games in, how do the players feel they're adjusting to Pokey Chadman's system? Achanwa and Larkins answer. And we'll preview Indiana's upcoming road trip in Seattle and Dallas. All that and more is coming up right now. Coming off a win over the defending champs on Wednesday night. Welcome into the Fever Film Room. I'm Pat Boylan, Natalie Achanwa, Erlena Larkins. Let's go to halftime. They go on a 13-0 run, I think, going into the break. You guys are all of a sudden down 14 in what otherwise had been a close game. Natalie, what was the message? You guys come out in the third and immediately got back in it. What was the message from Coach at halftime? Basically, uh, just to regroup. Uh, fever basketball never quits. Uh, we're gritty. We grind. And we kind of like the, the comeback moments. <laughs> uh, we're working on not getting down so we don't have to come back. But um, I think it was just another challenge. She challenged us to be better, um, to, to really take care of the basketball. We had a lot of live ball turnovers going into the half. So really just continue to take, ba take care of the basketball and run, 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 run. How key was getting out early in the third quarter? You guys got a couple of threes. And then all of a sudden, things were manageable. To your confidence, that strong start in the third. It was great for us. Um, normally we come out and we kind of stall in the third quarter and it takes us a little minute to get going. So that was great for us to get going early and to get ourselves back in the game so it didn't get out of reach. You mentioned coming back in games. You guys have overcome two double-digit deficits in the <laughs> second half in these two games. But what's allowed you to keep your composure? There, there's certainly a lot of leadership on this team, but especially when you lose your leader, you're still early in that process this season, going past Tamika Catchings. But you guys have had a lot of composure, I think, Natalie, uh, in, in these last two games in key moments. Definitely. I think we're, we're regrouping in leadership, um, but that's more of vocal leadership. We've always had players that lead by example. I mean, E's an example of one. She's going to get out. She's going to get tips on the ball. If she doesn't even get the rebound, she's tipping it. She's up there and pressuring the defense and getting deflections. And it's leading by example, things like that, that we might not have someone vocally telling us, hey, do this, do this, do this. But when you have people like that just leading you by example, it just brings an energy to yourself just watching people out there get it. You've certainly been tested early this season with your matchups on, on who you're going against and your opponent, Candace Parker, on Wednesday night. What was that battle like? Uh, <laughs> it was okay, I guess. I mean, Candace is a great player. She's an Olympian um, and now WNBA champion. You got Neka Gumake, uh, Defensive Player of the Year. So it was a great matchup. Um, and I feel like if I can take things away from those players that um, it'll be somewhat easier against players that are not as good. Marissa Coleman had been struggling a little bit in those first three games. Natalie, how good was it to see her shot go down? Oh, I mean, to hit the first three for us in the first half and then I believe the first uh, three points in yeah. the third quarter as well. I mean, I'm just really happy, happy for her. I know she puts in the work, puts the shots up, and, and to see them fall tonight, I think we were all really excited for her last night. <laughs> we were talking with uh, Tamika on the television broadcast about Candace Dupree a little bit, how she's kind of filling an on-the-court role that Tamika had. And and the more I watch the two of them, this is, this is tough, big shoes to fill for Dupree, but her game reminds me somewhat of Tamika's. Would you agree she's a calm influence on the court obviously a, a good player put up 18 on Wednesday night what do you see in Candace that she's brought this year Candace has brought leadership um, Candace is a champion as well I think like a maybe two-time champion just her poise and like I said most of all her leadership and she really showed that last night um, when we needed buckets we went to her she's calm she has a finesse game and she doesn't really get rattled but most importantly she made some really key stops for us on defense last night we talk to the coaches about the strengths on this year's team, free throw shooting, one of them. Depth as well, though, and you bring yourself, Tiffany Mitchell. A lot of names off the bench who have come in. I think you guys outscored them 31-4 to in bench points last night. Your role specifically, you feel like you're, you're molding into what they want you to do off the bench? Yeah, I, I really hope so. I strive to. Um, I think right before the game starts, like our benchy, we just have a little huddle and we have a little chat. And we really just talk about not having a drop off. I mean, we have our starters come in and they provide that first punch for us. So we want to make sure that when we're coming in the game, we're bringing equal or more energy to keep it the ball rolling so we're not having a little dip when we come in. So I think I've really been focusing on that this year. And I know our bench mob, as we call them together, we've been focusing on that. So um, we're really just trying to make the team as a whole better. Los Angeles, a team that's really deep as well, to have a night like that off the bench. What's it mean for you as a starter to know when you guys come off the court, Natalie, Tiffany down the line, come in, Erica, uh, that, that you're confident that they're going to keep that level high? It's great for us. It's great for our team. It's um, 
one thing that will give us a few minutes, you know, we're not the youngest team in the league, so it's just great to have our, our bench players come in and, and continue to play. Like last night, I just looked at the box score and I only played 23 minutes, but it felt like forever. Um, so it was good that people come in, they play well. And it also gives them the confidence that, hey, you know, you might not be a starter, but coach also believes in you too when you get in. Natalie, as a team, still early, just four games. Uh, do you notice a, diff a difference, whether it's in confidence, chemistry, of where you guys are after these two wins to say a week ago? Um, I think it's just the work, putting in the work. Um, I know it was a little bit more difficult at the beginning, not trying to make excuses, but with everyone coming in at different times and just trying to mesh with a new coach and a right. new system and, and new expectations. Um, I think we're finally just realizing how to apply those expectations um, and what to focus on um, in the game. And, and Pokey always says there's no little things. Um, so just making sure that we're focusing on the big picture and what we're supposed to do night in and night out. It's like Groundhog Day. You guys getting ready to go back to Seattle. Uh, <laughs> what'd you learn there in your first visit? For the first game, I think that we played well. Uh, we didn't play well consistently. We stuck together. Um, they came back and we came back and took the lead. So it just showed our resilience real early and that we didn't get down on ourselves. And it kind of gave us confidence going into the following games that, hey, this is the first game. And no, we didn't win, but we have so many good things that we can take away from it. Natalie, do you feel different at all going into this game in Seattle than you did the season opener? Yeah, like you said, we had spurts of, of, of good things we did in that game. And I think just having these two last games where we're tying things together together better, um, it will really help us going into this game against Seattle. Um, it's kind of a contrast. Like, they're as a whole, they're a younger team. And we have more veterans, and we're an older group. But um, I think we could just really use our experience to um, our benefit. And, and go get one in Seattle. You guys have to focus on that game coming up. It is Seattle, but it's a two-game road trip. The other one is in Dallas uh, on Tuesday. Any initial thoughts in that direction to take on the Wings for the first time in a few days? <laughs> not really. Um, we're familiar with them somewhat. We just played them not too long ago in preseason, actually. Yeah. So this game actually counts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it really does count this time. And um, they have a very young team, a very young team, a very capable team. So we have to go in there and, like Natalie said, use our experience to our advantage and play together. What's the key to the road trip, do you think? Taking one game at a time, I actually just didn't even think that we had Dallas next because I was so focused on Seattle. So really just taking one game at a time and, and learning from the opportunities that we're given. A couple of games on the road. Then on Saturday, June 3rd, the Indiana Fever are back here inside Bankers Live Fieldhouse. If you're watching this show on the website, click the Tickets tab right above us. That's how you can be here, or you can visit the Bankers Life box office to get tickets for the Saturday, June 3rd game or any games going forward. <laughs> Natalie Achanmo, Elena, appreciate your time. Good luck. Thank you. See you June 3rd. <laughs>